In this presentation, we will demonstrate several tools that are used to design HTML documents and reports generated in priority, such as changing colors to adjust the look and feel of documents, changing the color and look of fonts, changing or hiding column names, and changing the date format that appears in the document. Only users with the appropriate permissions have access to design options. If you lack such permissions, consult your system manager. We'll start by defining the company logo that will appear on all system documents, as well as a personalized signature that will appear on any documents that you generate. We recommend that you use a JPEG or a GIF file format for your company logo and that you import this file into Priority, where it can be accessed by all system users. If you work with multiple companies, affiliates, and or branches in Priority, you can import a separate logo for each in the relevant form. Let's enter the company data form and define a logo for any documents produced for the current company environment, International Demo Company. Move the cursor to the HTML logo column, right-click on the paperclip icon and select Import. In the dialog box that opens, locate your logo file and click Open. You can switch to a different company environment and repeat this process to add a logo for a different company. You can also add separate logos files for specific affiliates or branches in the affiliates or branches forms respectively. These alternate logos will then appear on any documents that are linked to the branch or affiliate in question. Next, we're going to customize the user signature that appears in any documents you generate. From the upper file menu, select the user signature command. In the parameter input screen that opens, we'll choose to define the signature that will appear in documents. A second parameter input screen appears, in which you can compose a personal greeting and indicate which elements you want to display in your signature. Most of the elements in this screen correspond to a parallel column in your personnel file. Next, we'll look at a few general definitions that apply to all reports and documents system-wide, and then we'll set up some custom definitions for an individual document. We will now demonstrate the design functionality in a specific document. In this example, we'll design the order confirmation document, but the same principles apply to various reports and documents throughout the system. The report customizations we are about to make will affect all users in all companies in the system. Let's go to the Sales menu, Orders, Sales Orders Reports, Order Confirmation, and locate the program used to print an order confirmation. Right-click the Print program and select Design Report. You can see a list of all print formats that have been defined for the document, such as the predefined standard format. Each of the predefined print formats comprises a different set of document components. Now, rather than modifying an existing format, we're going to duplicate the standard format and make our changes in the duplicate format. This is a good practice to adopt as it may prevent you from having to reconstruct the original design if it is needed at some later point. So let's right click the format title, select duplicate, and then assign the desired format title. Next, we'll open a new print format to view a list of the document sections. While some reports consist of a single section composed of the relevant columns, most documents, such as this one, contain a number of sections. Some sections are pre-designed in a fixed style, and you cannot rearrange their columns. Those sections without a fixed style appear as tables, and their columns can be rearranged. Click the arrow next to any section title to view its components' columns. We'll open one without a fixed style and use the up and down arrows on the right to rearrange the columns. You can also right click any column in order to hide or rename it. Hidden columns are indicated by a red X. To display a hidden column, right click the column and select Show.
In addition, you can revise the appearance of document fields and their titles. Right-click the desired field and select Field Attribute to open a dialog box in which you can change the field's font, font style, font size, color, background color, or alignment in the space assigned to the field. Different types of fields may also present other options. For instance, in fields that contain a number such as packing crates, you can also set the number of decimal places to display or choose to color negative values. In a date field, such as due date, you can choose the desired date format In text fields, in an itemized document, such as part description, you can also determine whether text for a given item will be broken automatically into more than one line if it exceeds the column width. This is the default setting, but it can be changed by flagging the Prevent Line Break attribute. Right-click the desired field and select Title Attribute to open a dialog box in which you can change the column title's font, font style, font color, background color or text justifications. To undo all changes to the report's appearance, right-click the format title and select Restore Defaults. When you first begin producing documents and reports in priority, you'll notice that they appear on a cream and brown background and that the default font color is black. However, you may want to change the standard color scheme of all printouts in your organizations, for instance, to match your company's logo. To change the background color, go to the System Management, System Maintenance, Advanced Design menu and open the Color Definitions form. In this form, you can change the RGB definitions used in any sections of the printout, either for the background or for the font itself. For instance, let's revise the background color of sections that are currently set to appear with a cream-colored background, so that they appear with a white background instead. And next we'll define sections that currently have a darker cream background so that they appear with a gray background instead. Finally, let's change the font color used for the report title to dark blue. You can also set color definitions to be used solely within a specific company. For instance, if you want to use a green font for the report title only when working in the International Demo Company, which is our current company environment, use the company-specific color definition sublevel form to set the RGB definitions used in this company. When you finish defining the desired color scheme, run the Create HTML Pages for Documents program in order to implement your changes in all document templates.
You can also change the font face and size if desired. By default, all system documents and reports are defined with the font Arial and the size 2, other than the report title section, which should have the size of 3. To change the font definitions for the body of all system reports and or documents, enter the font and color defaults form and move to the row for line. Place the cursor in the font name column and press F6 twice to enter the font definitions form and make the desired changes to the font face and size. You can also set special font definitions for a specific company in the company specific font definitions sublevel form. For instance, let's use the Verdana font for any reports and documents generated in the international demo company, which is our current company environment. Press escape to return to the font definitions form and then press escape again to return to the font and color defaults form. And now we'll move to the line for line 2 and repeat the procedure for this report element as well. This concludes our explanation of report document design and priority.